Today we're going to look at another unique uh, bit of kit to the museum. This is the M53 M59. So model 53, 1953 up to 1959. It essentially started off with a Praga V3S hull, so it's an existing truck chassis. The chassis itself was a 6x6 vehicle, so we had uh, six-wheel drive in high and low range gears. So this was given a name of Yesterka, which means lizard. Why it was called the lizard? Because it had a low profile, and this had the ability to go across country in other areas that other vehicles couldn't go into. It's only had about a 60 km an hour speed on road, so it was considered quite slow. The vehicle has leaf suspension, front and rear. As I said, six wheel drive, so we can essentially take drive from the front or give drive to the front of the vehicle. It'll give it a distance of about uh, 500 kilometres on road, carrying about 120 litres. The body or the, the cabin is made in one piece and then it's lowered onto the, the chassis. It's only lightly armoured. So on the front of arc here, we have a maximum of uh, 12 millimetres thick and on the side, we have a maximum of seven millimetres thick. But the, the front part here where the driver and the commander sit uh, essentially can go up to 24 millimetres thick. This is a Tatra 912 inline six cylinder diesel engine. It gives it about 110 horsepower. As I said, it only goes about 60 kilometers an hour uh, on road. This is the uh, driver's position. So he has a uh, four speed manual gearbox uh, with the winch drive to the front wheels and a high low range uh, gearbox as well. You've got clutch, brake and accelerator. This is a handle for the armoured visor at the front, so you can either have it in the open position or the closed position, and then he's got a slit uh, th that he can look through. And this is the commander's position, so he will have intercommunications as well to the gunner on the back. So he's got a little dome here that he can actually uh, stick his head out and have a look at uh, what's going on around him. This is the position and on the other side as well for the other additional crew members. So these are the guys that would be operating the gun and loading the gun. These panels just push out, and they've got the extra ammunition boxes in the back here as well. To lift these ammunition boxes, uh, carrying 50 rounds, they're quite heavy, so it is a two-man job. So unless you get your driver out or your commander out, I would essentially would have liked to have a five-man crew, you know, having a guy sitting in the gun, uh, because the gun can be operated off the back deck. We carry about 900 rounds on board, and you consider that they wouldn't operate independently, they'd be operating, you know, in a, maybe a troop of three to five, uh, perhaps. So you generally have a, a lot of uh, support around you as well. So this has the twin 30 millimeter VK 453s, or sometimes referred to as the M53 auto cannons. This has an elevation range of minus 10 up to about plus 85. It can traverse 360 degrees uh, around the vehicle and also whilst it's in the ground mount. So it carries 900 rounds on board. We have about eight or nine of these containers here. Each one of them holds 50 rounds. They're loaded manually uh, by the by the crew and they have a little handle that actually rotates them through into the magazine. These guns have a rate of fire of about 500 rounds a minute, but the optimum rate of fire for these, what they want to keep them at is 100 rounds a minute. They can fire armor piercing high velocity rounds, incendiary rounds, and they can also fire a high explosive round. These have a muzzle velocity of about a thousand meters per second for both types of ammunition, and they have an effective range out to about three kilometers. This is the gunner's position. So he has full power uh, to this whole gun system, but he traverses manually and in the elevation range as well. Two types of sighting. Uh, first is uh, using optics, and the second one is by using a vane sight. You can only use it in good weather and by day only. So it had no radar, it had no guidance system. So you could only really use it during the day. So when they don't want it on the vehicle, which is a good part of this bit of kit, Essentially start from the front, there's a couple of electrical connectors that they need to remove. They take this clamp off here and, and stow it. There's a winch system on this vehicle, so it goes forwards and back. So I've got the, uh, the ramps on here fitted already. On the left hand side here, just below the cabin itself is a handle, so this operates the winch. As the whole gun comes off down the sled, it gets to about uh, here, and then they drive the vehicle forward, and then it's fully emplaced on the ground. It has its own battery pack on the right-hand side, uh, so it does have its own power for uh, that gun system. To put it back on is just in reverse. They'll reverse the truck up, put the skids down, attach the cable to the front of the gun, and lift it back up, and then lock it back into position, attach its cables, and it's good to go. They come out with about uh, 1,450 of these vehicles in all, so they went out of service in about 2003, 
but they did see limited combat through the Yugoslav wars. This would have seen action against ground targets because the AP round did have some good penetrating power. It's said to be able to uh, penetrate about 93 millimetres of armour, I think up to about 1,000 metres. So for its time, it was probably good. Not so much in the anti-aircraft role because we're only looking at that we can use it through uh, daytime and, and not in poor weather. It does have its engine in there, so this would be, I think, a, a nice looking running vehicle for our Zama Fest. So if you think we should get this one running, let us know in the comments and uh, we'll see what we can come up with.